Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for our webinar focused on helping you make your 2018 crop insurance decisions. I'm Jim Mintert, uh, Director of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture, and joining me today is the Associate Director of the Center, Dr. Michael Langemeyer, who's also a Professor of Ag Economics here at Purdue. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the considerations you want to make for uh, making your crop insurance decisions. There's not a lot of changes this year compared to prior years, but that doesn't mean you don't want to sit down and really reevaluate what you're doing. And so with that thought, Michael, let's take a look at some of those considerations that you've outlined for making those decisions here in 2018. Yes, the good news about crop insurance is there's a lot of different options to compare, but that's also the bad news is you've, you've got a lot of things that you need to take a look at. Uh, and so we're just going to go through a few of these things that you want to, do want to take a look at. One of the things you want to examine is enterprise units, basic units, and optional units. We'll talk about those definitions in a little bit. But you want to take a look at the comparison of the premiums for those different products. And so that's always important. Uh, and we're going to suggest that op if you haven't used enterprise units before, take a close look at those and see if they fit into your farming operation. Um, we also want to uh, uh, emphasize the fact that a lot of people use harvest price option products like revenue protection and, uh, and, and ARP. Uh, I think you should continue to use those products. We're going we're to talk about the relationship between projected and harvest, price, uh, harvest, price, uh, harvest prices for corn. Uh, in particular, and there's several years where the harvest price is considerably higher than the projected price. And so because of that, uh, continue to use the harvest price option products. Uh, they're good products. Uh, 2018 is, is not a good year to reduce coverage levels. We said that last year too, but it's certainly the case with 2018 uh, to get revenue guarantee protection up there a bit. Uh, you need to take a, take a look at at least keeping the coverage level you had last year, if not trying to bump that a little bit. Uh, and then uh, uh, also compare RP to ARP in your county. Uh, and, and we really do mean this, this does vary county by county. In some counties, the premiums for RP and ARP are similar. In other counties, there's a lot of difference. And so take a look at that for your county and, and compare the premiums, uh, compare the, the payouts uh, for both RP and ARP. And you'll have a chance to do that. We're gonna put a slide here up yes. at the end that suggests you download the crop insurance tool from the University of Illinois Farm Doc team, which we always use every year, uh, which will really facilitate some of those comparisons on your own farm. Yes, and the, and the internet tools in particular, uh, one tool takes a look at the premium differences, the other tool looks at payout, possible payouts under the different products, and, and it includes uh, enterprise, uh, the unit comparisons, uh, the harvest price and harvest price exclusion uh, products, uh, coverage levels, as well as, as RP and ARP. And so you can take a close look at that tool for more information. So we'll put that up at the end, including the web address, so that you can facilitate that uh, going forward. So let's talk about some definitions here, because I think it's important to provide some clarity here at the outset. I'm going to actually start with the one on the bottom there. Enterprise units uh, is, is combines more of your units uh, in one county for a single crop. And so uh, the, the subsidy also tends to be higher in enterprise units. And so USDA RMA uh, is, is trying to push people a little bit towards the, the enterprise units. Uh, but what, one of the problems with the enterprise units, the premium is quite a bit cheaper because it does aggregate basic units uh, into, into one unit, if you will. Uh, because 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 it, it aggregates it it, redu it reduces uh, uh, it, it increases risk uh, in, in some ways uh, meaning that uh, if you have one field uh, in part of the county that that had a problem and you had a, a field another field in a different part of the county that was really good it's going to combine those two and you may not get any payment uh, and, and so and so and so and, and so it, it because because of that the pre you know. Uh, the premium is cheaper, uh, but you're not necessarily going to get a payout uh, near as frequently as so, you would with So, the Michael, others. I like to think of that maybe phrasing that a little different. It reduces the likelihood of a payment yes. in any given year. That's a better way to put but it. But if, if your real interest is ensuring the risk of your corn enterprise, for example, or your soybean enterprise, you still are doing a good job of ensuring that enterprise, but what you're not doing as, as good a job of, perhaps, uh, or giving up is another way of thinking of it, is the ability to collect on individual parcels or ind individual FSA numbers, right? Yeah, precisely. And, and the basic units busted down a little bit. Uh, it really, it really busts down the units into a, arrangements. Uh, so each share rent landowner arrangement is a separate basic unit owned in cash rent land. 
uh, is a separate basic unit, and so you're more likely to collect with the basic unit compared to the enterprise unit, but the premiums are higher. And we'll, we'll take a look at that with, with a couple of examples. The optional, optional units uh, provides even more protection for individual tracts of land. Uh, it divides basic units uh, based on township sections, so smaller, uh, smaller pieces of, of ground. Uh, as you'd expect, the optional unit, you increase your payout, uh, but you also cost you quite a bit more in terms of the premium. Uh, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the yield on the yield products. There are there is the area yield protection product and the yield protection product. Uh, there is some people in Indiana across the Corn Belt uh, that produce uh, that uh, purchase the yield protection product. Uh, this ensures against production loss only. Uh, it doesn't take into account price, just like the name suggests. Uh, one of the problems with the yield protection product uh, is is the guarantee. Uh, you take the APH approved yield times your coverage level times the projected price. That's very important to, to recognize there. It's multiplied by the projected price. And so if the price goes up, you're not paid on the harvest price. You're paid, uh, you're paid based on the projected price. And so, and so for that reason, um, it, it's not quite as, uh, it's quite a good, as good a product uh, as the revenue protection product uh, protecting you against changes in the harvest price. And for clarity, I think we're going to show a chart later on yes. that maybe helps illustrate why you might want to think about retaining that harvest price yeah. option. So we'll kind of come yeah. back to that here. And definitely the yield protection product, pick a higher coverage level because it's a little cheaper than the revenue protection product. And so if you're going to go with a product like that, uh, t you know, choose a coverage level that's fairly high because it is, it is relatively cheaper. These two products are frequently uh, pur uh, purchased by people across the Corn Belt. Uh, and, and in Indiana, of course, uh, the area revenue protection ensures against countywide revenue loss. And so you're, it's based on county yields, uh, uh, and, and that's the very important distinction there. And so if the county yield is relatively low, uh, you have a chance of getting a, getting a payment. Uh, there's different coverage levels uh, ranging from 70 to 90 percent uh, for the area revenue protection. So you get a little bit more higher coverage level than you can for yield protection, revenue protection, uh, with that 90% included. Uh, and again, with the area revenue protection product, uh, it's the greater of projected price or harvest price. And so uh, you do get that pr uh, protection uh, if, if the harvest price is different than the projected price, specifically higher, uh, it provides you more protection uh, in that case. Uh, the revenue protection product is, is similar, uh, it works in a similar way uh, to the area revenue protection. But in this case, rather than based on county yields, it's based on your actual yields. Because of that, a lot of producers uh, like the revenue protection product better than the area revenue protection. And so a lot of, a, a lot of counties in, uh, in, across the Corn Belt uh, it has a higher percentage of people buying the revenue protection uh, compared to the a area revenue protection. Uh, part of that has to do with the fact that it is their own yield. There's other reasons too. Uh, you know, the risk is different. And so uh, it just depends on your county. Uh, you know, uh, how these compare, but also the premiums are different, as I mentioned earlier. And so, and, and, and so depending on the county you live in, uh, ARP may be a, 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 a preferred product over RP. And so it's just something you have to look at. Uh, with the revenue protection product, uh, coverage levels of 50 to 85%. Uh, in Indiana, let's go specifically in Indiana. Uh, in Southern Indiana, the coverage level with revenue protection tends to be 75% to 80%. Uh, in northern Indiana, uh, the coverage level is 80 to 85%. Uh, and in the northern half, there's quite a few people that have that 85% uh, coverage level. Uh, why is that the case? Well, again, it has to do with the premiums. Uh, the premiums are a little lower for the higher coverage levels in, 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 in northern Indiana because the risk is different uh, compared to southern Indiana. And so, and so I would really encourage people to look at uh, you know, county, their, their county level data uh, using, the, using the crop insurance tools from the University of Illinois uh, and take a look at the premiums for different products uh, in, the, in the counties that they farm and also look at the payouts. Yeah, and I think one thing to think about, Michael, is you think about, if you're even remotely thinking about the ARP products, you really don't want to think about those low coverage levels because no. you're insuring against this broad geographic area, the entire county. You typically want to look at the highest or maybe the second highest, but most commonly the highest coverage level, which would be the 90% level. And that's true regardless, southern Indiana, northern Indiana, it, regardless of, of really the individual farm risk, 
uh, typically, if people buy ARP, they're buying it at that 90% coverage level. Yeah. They're trying to get a little bit more coverage than they can get with, uh, with the yield protection and revenue protection products. Yeah, but you don't want to pick those lower levels because yes. the risk of yields dropping below, revenues dropping yeah. below those. In the county, it's pretty slim. Right, so especially yeah. here in the Corn Belt. So. Yeah. so let's talk a little bit about projected prices and harvest price. Uh, they're based on set settlement prices for futures contracts in February for the projected price, and so we know what those are going to be for 2018. Uh, the harvest price is based on settlement prices for futures contracts uh, during October. Uh, we're showing both the projected price and the harvest price for 2016 and 2017, as well as the projected price for corn and soybeans uh, for 2018. Uh, the projected prices for corn and soybeans in, in 2018 are, are obviously very similar to what they were in 2017. Uh, that means that the premiums are very similar to what they were last year and your revenue guarantees are similar to what, what they were uh, last year. And as you look at those harvest price numbers, I think as you look at 16, 17, those harvest price numbers came in below the February uh, estimates, right? So having that harvest price option didn't necessarily pay off in those particular no. years, but we don't know how that's gonna turn yes. out in 2018. Yes. And we're actually gonna look at some history here with a chart in just a second. So maybe we should just go ahead and take a look at that chart. This chart, we're gonna, with this chart, we're gonna try to accomplish two things. And so it's a little bit of a busy chart, but what we're doing here is we're looking at the ratio of harvested uh, to projected crop insurance prices. The first thing we want to look at is let's assume that we had 80% coverage level, Jim. We'll draw a line in there, and then we're going to look at how many times uh, prices drop 20% uh, or more uh, between project, the projected price period uh, in February and the harvest price period in October. And you can see that there's, there's a few times in this 22-year period uh, where corn uh, specifically has dropped 20% uh, or more. And so that, that's one of the reasons why you'd want to look at revenue protection over yield protection, because it's going to give you some protection uh, if the price drops rather substantially uh, from, from February to October. So Michael, I just did a quick count looking at the corn bars on there. I think it looks like over the last, what, 22 years we, of data we got on the chart, I think uh, I counted five years yes. when corn prices dropped 20% or more from February to the harvest time frame. On the soybean side, not so often. I think maybe just a couple of times yes. when soybeans dropped more than 20% uh, from February into the fall. So keep that in mind as, yeah. you're, as you're looking at this. Now, when you're looking at products that, uh, that just have projected, uh, just use the projected price, uh, we haven't talked about revenue protection with harvest price exclusion or ARP with harvest price exclusion. Those products only use the projected price. The danger there is sometimes the harvest price is substantially above uh, the projected price. And so let's draw in the next line. Uh, there, and, and you can see here, both in terms of corn and soybeans, there's times where the harvest price is higher than the projected price, particularly for soybeans in 2003 and, and for corn and, and uh, corn and soybeans in 2010, uh, 2012. Uh, and, and the way to think about that is when the harvest price is, is substantially above the projected price, uh, the revenue guarantee is increasing uh, because, you, because you, we are able to use that harvest price for your revenue guarantee uh, rather than just looking at the projected price. And so that's a real added benefit uh, of the revenue protection and the area revenue protection products that include the har harvest price option. Uh, in, in some sense, you're getting a better revenue guarantee. And so again, I just counted quickly on the bars. I think over that 22 year span, it looks like I think we had six times. Uh, did I count right? One, two, three. Yeah, six times when the corn price um, exceeded that, right, going forward. And on the soybean side, I think seven times that happened. So you think out of 22 years, that's a pretty good ratio, yes, right? Yes, it is. Uh, and, and in the years where, the, where it's a substantial difference, the payout is, is, is quite different. Uh, going back to 2012 there for corn and soybeans, uh, the revenue protection, product, uh, revenue protection payout and the ARP uh, 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 product uh, payouts that included the harvest price option were rather substantial. 
But if you if you had the harvest price exclusion products, which are low, which are cheaper, uh, you save a little bit of money there. Your payout would have been really small. And so it's just a reminder: you know, buy the products that have the harvest price option. They cost a little bit more, but in, in several years here, uh, that it paid out. Uh, it paid out a tremendous amount uh, by having that option of using the higher of the projected or the harvest price. Yeah. So two points there. One is it's not just the number of times. Uh, when the f harvest price exceeded the February price, it's also the magnitude, right? Yes. And when it happened, it tended to be some, it makes as you can see on the chart, some difference. pretty big differences. Yeah. Yeah. 2003 soybeans, you know, just look at that. I mean, that you probably would have got very little payment, if any payment, with a, with a product that did not have the harvest price as, as part of the product. All right. Let's take a look at some actual premiums for this year at some individual counties. This is for corn from Knox County, Indiana, which for those that don't know the, the county map in Indiana, that's in southwest Indiana, a little bit north of Evansville, Indiana. We wanted to pick a, a county that was uh, that a large uh, production county in, in southwest Indiana. We're going to compare that with a large uh, production county in west central Indiana and just show you the differences in the premiums uh, between the different products and as you increase coverage levels. Uh, one of the things that I want to point out here is revenue protection at the 75% coverage level uh, was the, uh, it has the most acres insured uh, in, in 2017. It was closely followed by the revenue protection product uh, with 80% coverage level. And so Knox County, a lot of people focus on that 75 to 80% product. Uh, you, can, you can see here that the, the ARP product uh, in terms of a premium price compares quite favorably. Uh, and to that product, and so and so, take a look at that if you haven't been using ARP in in, in southern Indiana, um, you know, take a look at the ARP product, see how it fits in uh, it, to your operation because the premiums there are quite quite comparable, uh, compare favorably to the revenue protection product. Now, of course, the risk is different. Uh, one's using county yields, where the other one's using your individual yields, and so there is a difference in, in risk there. Uh, if, if you look at the uh, the yield protection product, it, it's surprising uh, how how that there's not a lot cheaper than the revenue protection product, and so I can see why a lot of people uh, pick the revenue protection product over the yield protection uh, in, in Knox County. Uh, Jim, we also have in red there uh, just a comparison of inter uh, the premium for enterprise units at 75% uh, compared to the payment with optional units. Uh, at, at 75 percent, and so that's not a typo. Uh, it, with the enterprise units, it's 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 about twelve dollars. Uh, with the optional units, it's thirty-one dollars, and so you get more protection. There's a certainly an increased likelihood of a payout with the with the optional units, but it is it is rather expensive uh, compared to enterprise units, and so this is something you have to think about very carefully. Uh, you know, do I want to 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 uh, ensure my entire uh, 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 corn acreage in one county, uh, and just protect against you know kind of a, a, a wide, uh, a wide uh, drought or, or wet conditions, uh, or do I need to compare township by township, more field by field level? Uh, the field by field level is going to be uh, quite expensive compared to the enterprise units. And I would argue probably for for many uh, corn belt operations, probably the bigger interest is in ensuring the enterprise, the corn enterprise, yes. and so taking advantage of the enterprise unit, lower cost per acre is going to be pretty beneficial. Now the, the basic units is not shown on here, but kind of a rule of thumb is, is the basic units is, is usually a, in between uh, the enterprise unit and the optional unit, and so you know, in the, they're probably in that low 20s uh, for the revenue protection uh, a product at the 75% coverage level in Knox County. And then maybe the last point, Michael, on that chart is if you were thinking about possibility of moving to an ARP product versus uh, revenue protection, and let's assume you've been at that 75% level, you'd probably want to look, well, I'll, I'll say a little more strongly than that, you'd want to look at the 90% coverage yeah. level under ARP. So yeah. in that case, you'd be looking at the $27 yes. an acre. And the comparison there is probably for the optional units, right? That's really yeah. where this starts to come into play. Obviously, the ARP at the 120, or yeah, at the 120 and 90% is going to be more expensive than either the 75 or the 80 percent coverage. So think about that as you as you look at. All right, let's take a look at White County. The, here the premiums are obviously a very different, so it's a different a, a different a set of risk parameters uh, in this in this uh, West Central County, uh, West Central Indiana County compared to the Southwest Indiana County, and so that's one thing to take a look at. And you can begin to see why more people use a higher coverage level here 
the, the premiums are fairly reasonable, even at the 85% uh, coverage level. The revenue protection product uh, at the 85% coverage level uh, is the most commonly uh, purchased product in White County, uh, and it's, it's right at $15 per acre. So it's, it's a little bit higher than that 75% coverage product uh, in Knox County, and so, and so quite a bit of difference in premiums across counties. Uh, also, the optional units is not near as expensive uh, compared to the enterprise unit uh, for White County. Uh, there's just a difference in the risk uh, county-wise and, and field level uh, in White County compared to Knox County. And so uh, this, this, this premiums uh, between the units and between the coverage levels really does vary county by county. And so it's something you need to take a look at. Uh, one thing that's interesting here is uh, for White County, the, the ARP product is considerably more expensive. Uh, and, and so, and so uh, just kind of, you're kind of looking at that, uh, you'd, have to think a, uh, you'd have to think a little harder about using ARP in White County uh, compared to Knox County because of the increase in the cost. And again, that's where the uh, crop insurance tools come yes. into play because it allows you to look, look at the what the probability yeah. is and, and start yeah. to think about the expected yeah. value yeah. Of, that, of that particular and, product. And, and, and you're right, Jim, and, and 90, it, 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 we're not going to show this uh, today, but uh, the payouts at 90% are going to be much more frequent, larger uh, than at 85%, and so there is, there is, it is possible uh, that you that the 90% product would, would fit someone. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it on a year by year basis over the last, uh, you know, simulated over the last 30 or 40 years, what takes place with the ARP products is uh, when it does pay off. It's uh, large. It tends to be a large payout, and so and it's more frequent payout too, for obvious reasons. You only have to have a 10% loss compared to the, the 15%. Well, loss. yeah, that, that kind of depends yeah, a little bit yeah. because you're insuring on a countywide yes. basis. So yeah. the big yeah. thing is the fact that the payouts tend to be large. And you want to, uh, if you're going to buy that product, that's why you have to buy the highest levels of coverage yeah. or at least think about that. So, um, Just but, taking a quick look at the revenue guarantees, uh, uh, you know, I remember the 75 to 80% uh, uh, revenue protection products are very commonly purchased in Knox County and then in White County they, that 85% is commonly purchased. Uh, and, and comparing uh, the, the revenue protection guarantees to the ARP uh, guarantees. And so that ARP guarantee is, is quite a bit higher. Uh, and so that's something you do need to take a look at. Uh, how much protection do you need? Are, are you comfortable with a kind of a county level product uh, versus an individual unit product? Uh, just some, let's relate this a little bit to cost of production. Uh, variable costs for, for corn in our budgets, Jim, are, are right at about $440 right now. And so in all of these situations, we're able to cover variable costs. Uh, you know, depending on the product, you're able to cover quite a bit of the overhead cost uh, compared to the other product. And, and one of the things you want to look at is you kind of want to relate the increase in premium uh, to the increase in, in the revenue, a uh, revenue guarantee. And so if you look at the, at, at White County, for example, if you went from 85% to 80%, uh, that's $35. Let's go back to the premium to see how much that re reduced premium. Uh, if, you, if you go from 85% uh, uh, to, uh, to the 80%, uh, what would that be, $7? Uh, so $7 drop in premium going from 85 to 80%. Uh, and, so the, and so if you look at the relationship between those, uh, you would need a payout about every once every five years. Uh, you know, to make that worthwhile. To make that work. Uh, for, a lot, you know, for obviously, for a lot of people are choosing 85%. They think that's likely. Uh, and so they're going with the higher coverage level. And so that, that's kind of the way to, to, to potentially compare uh, these different coverage levels. Look at the increase in the revenue guarantee and compare that uh, to the increase in the premium. And just look at the ratio, Yeah, right? the ratio. Yeah, it gives you a good, a good uh, kind of thumb, thumb guide, so. Uh, let's look at soybeans. We won't spend quite as much time on soybeans as, as we did uh, on the corn. Uh, we just wanted to show you that uh, it's a very similar trade-offs here. Uh, you know, you have to look at uh, uh, what coverage level you need and how much increase in premium you're getting. Uh, you can see for Knox County here, if you go from 75 to 85 percent, pretty big jump in the premium uh, for, for any of the products. Uh, and, and so that's something you'd have to think long and hard of if you wanted to, to move the coverage level uh, to the 85 percent. Uh, 75, 80, 75 and 80 percent are very commonly purchased in Knox County. Uh, and, and so, the, and so, you kind of focus on on those two right there. Uh, you're looking at if going from 75 to 80 percent in, in Knox County, you're looking at about five dollar increase in the premium. Uh, and, and so, let's kind of keep that in the back of our minds. 
Uh, let's focus on 80% and 85% revenue protection uh, in terms of the White County soybeans. Uh, you're looking again at, a, at about $6 there uh, increase in the premium. Looking at that enterprise unit. Yeah, looking at the enterprise unit. And so let's see what happens to the, uh, the revenue guarantees. Uh, you look at Knox County, uh, that was about a $25 difference in revenue guarantee. So that $5 uh, you know, in relationship to a $25 uh, increase in revenue guarantee, uh, the ratio of about 20%. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the White County, again, uh, $6 compared to $27, $27 increase in the revenue guarantee. Again, you're looking at about a 20% ratio there. And so, and, and, and so you, just have to, you just have to kind of uh, think in the back of your mind, is that worth it? You know, is it is that five six dollars uh, worth the increase of of twenty of roughly twenty five dollars in that revenue guarantee? Yeah, because obviously you're going to trigger more payments, mm -hmm. more frequent payments with the higher coverage level. And then the question is, do I think it's going to happen more than one time out of five? Uh, that, that's really what it boils down to. Okay. You know, here we're uh, for in terms of uh, being above variable costs, we're even we're even more above variable costs for soybeans than we were for corn. Uh, the variable cost for soybeans are, are, are right around uh, 240, 250 in, in that range. And so, and so in, in some ways, you're, you're providing more coverage for soybeans than you are corn simply because corn, soybeans look a little bit more profitable than corn. Right. Uh, and so certainly with soybeans, uh, you, you, you could think about, if you're, that, that's one place you could think about increasing your coverage level a little bit. The premiums tend to be lower. Uh, and and you're getting you're getting better coverage because it's a little more profitable. And so, if you are thinking about increasing your coverage on one crop, look at soybeans first. Okay. So, one thing to think about is the APH yield exclusion. Explain how this works for us. This isn't going to fit every county, and so that's one thing that's very important. But the way this works, uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, is it allows for the exclusion of an actual yield for a crop year that had a very low yield in a particular year. Uh, at least 50% below the simple average. That seems rather large, but for example, there's parts of southern Indiana in 2012 uh, had yields that were that were more than 50% below their average. And so, and so for some of those counties, uh, this yield exclusion product uh, actually would work because it would exclude that low year uh, and recal recalculate uh, recalculate the, the APH, if you will. And so if yield, our kind of rule of thumb here, if yield exclusion is available in a county, it is generally beneficial to use this option uh, since the associated premium increase is small uh, compared to the increase in the revenue guarantee. It really does uh, change those revenue guarantee for counties that have at least one year uh, in terms of yield exclusion. Now, as you go further west, in the Western Corn Belt, there could even be two years. You know, it's riskier out there. Uh, there could be a couple years uh, uh, where you actually c you know, can't exclude. And, but, but when you're looking at the Eastern Corn Belt here, uh, if, if there is a year, it's probably gonna be one year. Yeah, so just for clarity, what's, what's going on here is for the right to exclude a yes. really low yield from your APH calculations, RMA is effectively charging a higher premium. Yes. And you just wanna look at how much they're charging and what that impact is on your revenue guarantees. But the thumb rule is, most of the time, if it's available, you probably wanna do it, okay? And you can ask your, your crop insurance agent if, if, uh, if the county you're in uh, is eligible or has a year that could be excluded uh, and, and see what the difference in premium and revenue guarantee is. But also the, uh, the, the uh, crop insurance tool spreadsheet uh, from University of Illinois uh, has that calculation in it. Yeah. And so you can take a look at it in the spreadsheet. All right, so we, we mentioned the spreadsheet several times, so here's the web address. The University of Illinois Farm Doc Tool uh, team has put this together, actually headed up by Gary Schnitke over at the University of Illinois. Um, we advocate using that tool. That's the one we like to use. It, it takes a quite a bit of effort to put that tool together, so rather than trying to do any, doing your own, this is the one to use. Um, the premium calculator and payment evaluator are extremely simple to use. They're internet tools. You basically put in your state and county uh, and, and it, up, it brings up the premiums for the premium calculator, for the payment evaluator. Uh, you have to put in a couple more things, but the, the big things you have to put in is, is where you're, what county, where you, where's your county, uh, and, and from there, it'll, it'll really take a close look at the, uh, the possible payments. Using historical price distributions, uh, it'll look at possible payments for the different products, and so quite illuminating. 
Uh, I like to use the spreadsheet simply because I like Excel spreadsheets. Uh, the spreadsheet has both of those elements in it, premium uh, and payment evaluator, as well as I, I was saying earlier, which products are commonly purchased in these different counties. That's in the tool. So you can see for your county uh, what everybody else is buying. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it has the full distribution of what people are buying, uh, different products and what coverage levels that's in there. Uh, it also has, in, it also has, it's not exactly the payment evaluator, but it also has a, a sheet that takes a look at uh, you know, payments for different possible payments for different products and so and so either the internet tool or the spreadsheet are extremely useful. So the thing I like to do or encourage people to do uh, Michael is um, fire up the tool whether you're using the web version or the spreadsheet version and start off by looking at what you purchased last year yes and then you're probably thinking about possibly one or maybe two possible changes Look at those, and if you do that, then things are pretty pretty yes. manageable, right? You, you yeah. don't want to look at every possible combination, yeah. but narrow it down a little bit. And for most people, I think that's going to be pretty straightforward. But start with last year, then look at maybe one or two different changes, and, and I think you'll find the tool is very helpful. Now, the, just a, a couple more hints on the Excel tool. Uh, when you go in there, you need to make sure that the, uh, the, the projected price is correct. There is a, a place in the spreadsheet to, to, uh, to put in the projected price, and so you do have to correct that. Uh, also, the volatility factor is something that you can change, and so you want to use the, the prices and the volatility factors that we have in, 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 this, in the notes. In, this in our slide deck, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, which we will post with this. And it's amazing, that volatility factor in particular, it's amazing how much that changes premiums. I suppose yeah. that's common sense. Yeah, but. good point. So just to follow up on that, though, we will post a version of the slide deck on, the, on our website. You can download that. Um, that'll probably be out there maybe not this afternoon, but probably tomorrow. So uh, check for that. So let's just kind of wrap up. And, and we kind of started with this, but I think it's a good, good way to kind of wrap up some conclusions here. First of all, if you're not using enterprise units, we would strongly encourage you to at least look at it. Uh, the difference between enterprise units and either the basic or the optional units is you're effectively insuring your current enterprise uh, in a given county. And that, uh, in return for doing that, um, RMA offers a lower premium. Um, if your goal is to insure your farming operation, both your corn and the soybean enterprise, uh, it's a good alternative. The probability of collecting in a given year starts to go down when you switch from either the basic or the optional to the enterprise units. But from a long run consideration, I don't think that's the primary consideration. And I know that's something you want to think about. What you really want to do here is, for most cases, is purchase insurance that, that helps you manage the risk for your enterprise. So that's why we think that's a, a good alternative. Uh, the way the premiums are structured, it, it can be pretty attractive relative to the other two alternatives. Um, we have encouraged you to think pretty hard, if you're not already doing this, to select the harvest price option, uh, whether you're, you're choosing the RP product or the ARP product. We had that slide that kind of illustrated how many times that made a difference. And perhaps more importantly, Michael, than just the number of times is that when it does trip, when, you're, when there is a difference, when the harvest yeah. price option is higher than the February price, makes a large difference in the possible payouts. It can make a big difference. And so you want to look not just the number of times that the, uh, that the harvest price option exceeded the February price, but look at the magnitude of the change when that did happen. In a number of those cases, it was pretty big. And that's, that's the reason we encourage you to look at the harvest price option. Um, as Michael indicated a couple times, I think 2018 is not a good year for most people to think about reducing coverage levels. Uh, there are a lot of ways to manage cost in your operation. We don't think for many people that reducing their coverage of cro with respect to crop insurance is a good way to try and minimize cost. Okay? And, and quite often, we, uh, we, we've talked about this before, but quite often if you're, if you're looking at trying to reduce cost rather than reducing coverage levels, think about going from basic and optional units to enterprise units. Yeah. Uh, your risk is changing, so your, your situation's changing. Uh, but nevertheless, that's probably a more prudent way uh, to cut costs than, than reduce your coverage level. Because yeah. you go to you go to a pretty low coverage levels, and and your possibility of payout really drops, uh, it drops tremendously. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I probably feel even more strongly about that than you do. Yeah. So, um, and then the last point is you might want to think about looking at, at uh, our ARP in your county, and this is very very much a county level decision. Uh, the way that ARP product is priced varies quite a bit across counties, and you'll want to evaluate that. The way we like to look at it, again, is using the crop insurance tool. 
and think about the probability of collecting. And so it's a different kind of product. It fits some people. It doesn't fit everybody, but it, if it potentially fits you, it's worth taking a look at. So, But I think it, it goes back to the, the uh, something that you were sharing earlier on, uh, pertaining to this slide. It really, it really depends on how you think about risk. If you're trying to protect against widespread drought or widespread wet conditions where, where yields in the, in the county and the area are really low, uh, the you know, enterprise units, ARP, makes more sense if that's what you're thinking. If you're thinking more of it landlord by landlord, field by field, then the ARP is probably not gonna make as much sense because you're not using your own yields. Yeah. And so I think that's another way to kind of think about this relationship between RP and ARP. All right, so with that, we're kind of wrap up our coverage here. Um, one thing I wanted you to encourage you to, to perhaps do if you haven't already done so is we have a relatively new crop basis tool to help you look at historical crop basis and use that as a guide to forecasting uh, corn and soybean basis here in the Eastern Corn Belt. Uh, it's a relatively new tool. It's available on our website. It's on the top menu bar. Uh, so just go to purdue.edu slash commercial ag and you'll see on the right hand side it says crop basis tool and you can kind of go from there. The tool is still in beta form, so we're still working on it, but it is available for use. Check it out. Uh, if you've got a question, don't hesitate to shoot us an email and, and uh, we'd be happy to respond. So with that, we'll look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thanks for joining us today. On behalf of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture, I'm Jim Mintert, and on behalf of Michael Langemar, thanks for joining us.